Warning, you might find the content herein disturbing, but the truth must be revealed. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. I nostri programmi sono offerti in molte lingue. Consultate suprememastertv.com barra schedule. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention warns that three out of four new or emerging infectious diseases in people come from animals. And the World Health Organization, the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, and World Organization for Animal Health, have previously stated that increased demand for animal protein is one of the main risk factors of a pandemic. Pandemics, the key to prevention, part three of three, Continue watching to find out more. Greetings, noble viewers. My name is Melvin. The people of the United States Virgin Islands wish that your life will be filled with joy and peace. May the divine bless you for all your kind deeds. Welcome to the concluding episode of Pandemics, the key to prevention, part three of three. In our previous episodes, we learned that most of the 20th century's major pandemics, AIDS, swine flu, H1N1, SARS, MERS, Ebola, bird flu, etc., were zoonotic. That is, they originated in animals. Similarly, the current COVID-19 pandemic was transferred from bats to pangolins and then to humans. The threat of future zoonoses or animal transmitted diseases is even more concerning. Since 1960, the Earth's population has more than doubled, but during that same period, meat production has increased by approximately 500%, meaning that humans are eating more meat than ever before. Currently, over 72 billion land animals are slaughtered for human consumption every year, and what's even more troubling is that many of these animals were raised on factory farms. For years, world health experts have warned about the dangers of factory farms as uncontrolled sources of new viruses. Dr. Michael Greger, renowned U.S. physician, lecturer, and author of Bird Flu, a virus of our own hatching, calls these farms a perfect storm environment for infectious diseases. If you actually want to create global pandemics, he warns, then build factory farms. He recalls the 2009 outbreak of swine flu, or H1N1, when it was discovered on a factory farm in Newton Grove, North Carolina, USA. Industrial animal farms have been shown to be breeding grounds for disease for at least 10 reasons. For example, because of the sheer numbers of animals, because of the overcrowding. It's like having you know, 5,000 people in an elevator and someone sneezes. Because of the stress crippling their immune systems. The operation in Newton Grove, North Carolina, was a breeding facility in which thousands of pregnant sows were confined in gestation crates, also known as sow stalls. These are veal crate-like uh, barren metal cages about two feet wide. These highly intelligent social animals essentially kept in a box week after week, month after month for nearly their entire lives they can develop crippling joint deformities, lameness. Not only can these pregnant pigs not turn around, they can barely move for most of their lives. 
because of the lack of fresh air. The dankness helps keep the virus alive in these kind of facilities. Because there may be no sunlight. 30 minutes of direct sunlight utterly deactivates the influenza virus, but it can last for days in the shade and weeks in moist manure. And indeed, because of the decomposing fecal waste, releasing ammonia, burning the respiratory tracts of these animals, predisposing them to infection in the first place. Put these and all these other factors together, and what you have is really this kind of perfect storm environment for the emergence and spread of new so-called super strains of influenza. In this age of emerging diseases, we now have billions of feathered and curly-tailed test tubes for viruses to incubate and mutate within billions more spins at pandemic roulette. World organizations recognize the need for international regulation of the livestock animals industry. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, states that as a global community, we must start applying the appropriate animal health policies and programs in order to safeguard public health and ensure food safety. Similarly, the World Health Organization, WHO, recommends international laws or policies as the way forward for the prevention and control of emerging and re-emerging zoonotic diseases. Pandemics are immensely costly, both in terms of lives lost and economic costs, and most of them come from animals. Raising livestock animals and meat consumption are also the major causes of climate change, deforestation, pollution, and loss of wildlife. Given these massive costs, what kind of laws do we need to enact? Ed Winters, aka Earthling Ed, is a vegan educator from London, England. In his YouTube video, Coronavirus, How Did It Really Start and How Do We Stop It Again? He explains that meat consumption has been the root cause of many of the world's deadliest diseases. As such, eating meat can no longer be considered a personal choice. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention warns that three out of four new or emerging infectious diseases in people come from animals. And the World Health Organization, the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, and World Organization for Animal Health, have previously stated that increased demand for animal protein is one of the main risk factors of a pandemic. How can we claim that exploiting animals is a personal choice when doing so not only kills trillions of non-human animals, but in turn increases our risk of pandemics? If COVID-19 can teach us anything, it must be that in the blink of an eye, everything can change. And we must ensure that when it dissipates, we do not go back to business as usual. As long as we exploit others, we increase our risk of these things happening again. How many more have to die? How many more viruses does there need to be? How many more need to suffer? And at what point does enough become enough? Let us use this crisis to learn from our mistakes. Let us learn to treat everyone who lives here with respect and to also respect the planet itself. We'll take a moment now to listen to an important message and we'll return shortly. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our program, Pandemics, the Key to Prevention, Part 3 of 3. COVID-19 started because of humanity's habit of meat consumption. Is COVID-19 trying to tell us something? Dr. Michael Clapper, a highly acclaimed physician, consultant, and speaker, believes the current pandemic is a warning. I have to say uh, something about the origin of this scourge that we're facing. Uh, this was not a random event. It has to do with the confinement and slaughter and eating of animals. Uh, we are plant-eating creatures, and we seem repeatedly seem to violate that, uh, that natural reality. And this is a message from the animals, another message. And so the bats are telling us, the pangolins are telling us, the pigs are telling us, the cows are telling us, stop eating us. We're not your food. And if you confine us and eat us, you're violating natural law and it's going to come back on you. And that's really uh, what this coronavirus is really all about. And so 
All we have to do is go to our natural diet. The, the bats are telling us that we are not your food. You eat rice and beans and greens and fruits and vegetables. You'll be fine and healthy. We'll be fine and healthy. Let's eat a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet. And this will all go away. This will be the last uh, animal-based viral epidemic we'll ever have to face. And, and that's the real message. For more than three decades, Supreme Master Ching Hai has been reminding us about the bad karma we incur from eating meat and the need to adopt to the compassionate plant-based lifestyle. The current situation is so critical that in March 2020, Master sent an urgent message to all world leaders and governments. The world is burning, threatened to get worse any moment. Humans and animals perishing at an alarming rate. Heavens and earth are plaguing us with ever new, more strange diseases. Destructive signs are evident everywhere. Warning signs are amber and obvious around our world. Our climate is accelerating. Animal racing, fish, egg, milk industry, etc., anything to do with animals, are the worst producers of lethal methane gas which hits up our planet. So, Stopping these brutal, murderous businesses is the fastest way to cool our earth. You have the power to stop all this. You have the privilege to implement vegan law. No more animal-related suffering businesses. Zero pain, agony for all beings, humans and animals. Because kindness will beget kindness and... Compassion will beget compassion. Mercy will beget mercy from heaven. And this vegan law is the most effective way to save our world. So do not run away anymore from this inevitable decision. Simply just make the vegan law and sign it before it's too late for you to decide the right thing, before it's too late to even regret before more of God's wrath descends upon us with more severe weather, more plague, more terror, more lives lost, more precious resources disappear, more financial disaster. Work for God, with God, so you will be feeling light, pure, and happy. By doing the right thing now, make the vegan law to save our world. Make veganism the law. Many thanks, Supreme Master Ching Hai, for your clear guidance and direction. We pray that all beings soon adopt the noble, compassionate vegan lifestyle. Wise viewers, thank you for your company today. Coming up next is Alam Orion, Vegan, and the National Animal Rights Day, Part 1 of 2, right after Noteworthy News. May you, your children, and your grandchildren soon enjoy a beautiful, peaceful vegan world. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash PE.